Hello and welcome to TRADOC In Depth. I'm John Harlow with the TRADOC News Service. At the Association of the United States Army Winter Symposium, General William S. Wallace, the Commanding General of the United States Army Training and Doctrine Command, unveiled the newest Army Field Manual, FM-30 Operations. FM-30 determines how our Army fights in an era of persistent conflict. I'm joined today by Lieutenant General William Caldwell, the Commanding General of the Combined Arms Center at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, to talk about FM-30 and the way it affects our Army. That's next on TRADOC In-Depth. Sir, you've said this doctrine is evolutionary and the impact on the force is revolutionary. What impact does FM-30 have on our soldiers? The, the entire leader development piece uh, is being revised in, in the way we look at it and approach it. We've recognized that, you know, you've heard of the strategic sergeant, the strategic corporal. Well, today it's the strategic private. Literally, from the youngest man and woman serving in uniform to the most senior, can all have an impact out there as to what occurs. Um, the actions that we take out in the field, that our young men and women take, have to be reflective in what we're saying uh, also on, on the other side by anybody else. And so it's revolutionary in the sense that how we approach and think about how we're going to conduct operations in the future, recognizing that stability, civil support operations are just as important as offensive and defensive is in fact a dramatic new way of how we're going to approach military operations in the 21st century. Sir, how does FM-30 shape the way our Army interacts with other services and our allies? One of the key aspects of this manual is the fact that we have recognized the importance of operating the joint interagency, intergovernment, and multinational environments. More than anything we've ever done before, we realized back in the 80s and 90s, it was all about becoming joint. Today, it's all, all about the whole of government. It's about the entire United States government working with our allies, our partners, and our friends uh, in the world. We will never go to war again as the U.S. military. We will always go as the U.S. government. And so that recognition and understanding will, in fact, drive many things. And so it's been incorporated into our doctrine so that we all start inculcating that in everything we're doing. Sir, now that our Army has a new field manual for operations, what kind of training and education are we going to provide our commanders and NCOs to get them up to speed on the new doctrine? We're going to use a, a multitude of means. Um, most importantly is we're putting together training support packages, uh, mobile training teams that will go out and, in fact, interact and work with both units and the schoolhouse, uh, doing the train the trainer, answering the questions, taking them and uh, using them. We're going to produce, we have a CD-ROM coming out that will have a uh, self-instructional capability to use there. Uh, we're gonna set up an FM30 website. We've got that that's up now and running so people can get on and interact there and share back their comments and their questions and their concerns. And I think important part of all this, John, is to realize our chief said, I want this manual out now because we need the blueprint established, but I want the capability within a year to literally go back and start to make modifications and adjustment to it if necessary. What he didn't want was just to go through three years of staffing before it got out uh, to the force. And so he took over last May, and we'll have it out, as you know right now, less than a year um, under his watch. And, and he's willing to do that because he understands the importance of getting most of that knowledge out there today. And then as we need to, we'll go back and revise it as, as early as a year from now if necessary. And FM30 talks about the whole of government approach to stability operations. How important was it to get the other government agencies on board for this approach? Obviously, uh, it has been a challenge. We have seen that. I don't think anybody would deny that. The rest of the U.S. government is not set up to operate like the United States military is. And, and there, there probably needs to be some changes that are made there in the United States government. And, and you've heard people talk about a Goldwater Nichols for the U.S. government. And, and something like that probably is appropriate. But what's key and what our our chief of staff of the Army is telling us is that he wants us to be prepared to take it on and do as much as we need to to set them up for success, recognizing they don't have the resources and the personnel perhaps 
trained and ready to go like we do today. The bottom line is we've got to make sure the U.S. government succeeds and we'll do what's required at this time to make sure that happens. Sir, what is exciting to you personally as a soldier about this doctrine? What really gets me excited about this, John, is the recognition in our doctrine of the importance of the information domain. We know it, we're exercising it, we're doing it in theater, but now to codify it into our doctrine is critical. We have the potential today to literally take and modify the way we conduct military operations. Non-lethal means are as every bit as important, if not more so, than lethal in many respects. Uh, we're operating among the people, and when you're in and among the people, the non-lethal aspects of it all, the information domain becomes so much more important. And so the fact that we have all come to recognize that, that we're now empowering it, we're enabling it, we're encouraging it, uh, tells me that the leadership from top to bottom understands and has taken advantage of this important medium. General Caldwell, thanks for joining me today on Tradoc In-Depth. With Tradoc News Service, I'm John Harlow.